very early on there was a, a, a feasibility study done just to look at what RSPB sites, if there were beavers around, could actually take them and we were quite high up the list. So then suddenly February, March time, all hands on deck as the legislation changed and ScotGov made it possible for um, sites to do translocations of beavers as an option for mitigation. And then yes, we got our licence just before Christmas and now we're getting ready to actually do the, the translocation that we've been talking about for so long. And it's been a lot of work to get to this point, but it's one of the most exciting projects that I think I've worked on. Well, this plant here is called phalaris or reed canary grass um, and as you can see we've got rather a lot of it here in the fen. It's a really tall plant um, and it shades out a lot of other plants which are potentially more interesting species so we end up with a lot of the same rather than niches being opened up for the um, potentially more interesting fen plants that we should be seeing a lot more of here. Beavers we should open up a lot of channels into this area which will immediately open up opportunities for new plants to colonise um, and diversify what we've got actually within this fen area. That's why beavers are keystone species, they're also called ecosystem engineers um, and basically they do so much. Their activity just in what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis can really change the habitat and what's around them. And this is one of the most exciting projects that I feel that I've been involved in when I've been working in RSPB. We're talking about introducing a keystone wetland species which is currently absent from the landscape that will be able to come in and modify the habitat and look after the reserve much better and easier than we could. These are the specially built beaver holding facilities at Five Sisters Zoo. So we've worked with the zoo for several years um, doing this beaver translocation work and it's really important that we've got quarantine facilities specifically for beavers and we can keep them quiet and do all their health screening until they're ready for release. So in this pen we've got Dad and the five kits and you can see this is oh, effectively their lodge. So they've taken all the bedding that we provided, all the sticks and they created this kind of dome. So it's amazing to think there's six animals in there now sleeping. It means we can handle it safely, it's uh, dark and restrained and it's just the most uh, stressless way to handle beavers. 17. 17 back on. Yep. It's a heat pad. So we're just heating up the tail so the blood flows a bit better for sampling. Mm -hmm. 
it's really important that the, every animal we release is in really good body condition, that there's no causes of concerns. So the vet takes a good look at body condition, we take various measurements such as weight, tail dimensions to see if the, the animals are in good condition. Then we also take a load of samples for disease screening. Anytime you're releasing an animal, especially a conservation translocation, you want to make sure the animal's in great condition and you know, our actions are not uh, introducing any diseases or parasites that wouldn't be there that could potentially harm other wildlife or livestock or, or humans. So it's just uh, you know, responsible to make sure the animals are in good condition. But to get these animals from conflict areas, so working alongside land uh, owners, hopefully helping you know, their day-to-day -day life as well, but then releasing the animals to places where you know, they're wanted. I mean, that's, that's why we all do it, and that kind of you know, keeps the spirits high. If it can all work out, then these animals are going from places where they potentially are causing conflict to places where they can do a lot of good. This is a temporary beaver lodge that we have made them here at RSPB Loch Lomond. Um, it's just made of straw bales and you can see we've covered it in branches just like a beaver would. Um, so what we've actually done to make them feel really comfortable is we've gone and we've picked up um, bales from the zoo that were in their pen that they were using as their bed. So these bales smell of them, so the smell of their territory, so it should help them feel nice and safe when like, they get here. And we've actually put different bits of the bedding around the floor um, so when they get let out the crates here they should feel a bit safer being smelling of them and smelling like their new home. I am feeling very very excited, incredibly excited. I think everything's in place now and yet yeah, just nervously anticipating their arrival.
it took a few of them a while to find the water, but they've all gone together and you can see some of the kits came together. So they've all gone in the same direction and uh, that's where the kind of uh, artificial lodges are, where there's a bit of a pond. Um, so hopefully after about an hour or two they settle down and they can just start doing their stuff here. I don't think it could have gone any better really so and now they're here and they'll do their thing we'll see what that is the amount of time that we actually got to spend so close with them it's just complete privilege but I just thought they were gonna open up the thing and they just like bolt, bolt out and in the water and that was it gone but we, we got to watch them all sniffing around and one came right up to my foot and they're like oh just stand in this you know it's like stand the stillest that you've ever stood in your life and just so nice and to share that with everybody and see everybody's reactions and everybody smiling and it was just amazing <laughs>